I know what you're all thinking. Uh, Mr. Abella knows how to go on uh, Discord. And uh, yeah, well, basically I do. But really, what I want to teach you are a few of the little tricks to make your own Discord bot. And I want to show you a few of the safety things that are required because I know students are going to do it whether I want them to or not. And I want to be just a little bit more cautious. Now, if you destroy my um, Discord account, I'll cry. Please don't do it. But I'm trying to show you to be as safe as possible. And I hope I've been reasonably safe in this. So the first thing you've got to do is you've got to make your bot. Let's head over to the developer site, a Discord uh, developer applications, and we're going to create a new application. I'm going to give this a very simple name, uh, test app, just to show you. And I'm going to agree to all the terms and conditions, which I've read very thoroughly in the past, honest. Then you can put a description. The icon's really nice because that allows you to actually have an icon for your bot and a description. Now we're going to get into the important stuff, the bot. Right, you add a bot. You can't delete your bot unless you delete your whole app. Now, the next little part is we're going to copy. Now, that token is very important, and I'm doing my very best not to show you that token in any way, shape, or form on this video. The next thing I need to do is tick these boxes to allow us to use the bot. Once we've done that, uh, we need to tick some permissions, which we need to go over to the C Authentic 2 to do over there. So I'm going to create a URL generator. Now be very careful. Some of these permissions are pretty crazy. So first tick that it's a bot. That's handy. Then I'm just basically going to tick most of the things to allow us to read and write. I'm even going to allow us to attach files that might be a bit far, but uh, have a look. I'm not allowing slash commands. But you might need that if you did it more sophisticated. But the only thing in terms of admin permissions is to read messages or view the channel. Right, I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to make my test app. And uh, my bot server is going to be very handy. So I'm going to do that straight away. And that's going to allow us to do that. Continue. Great, it's got to do all those things. You can untick some of those if you think those permissions are a bit too much. And then check that you're human and we have a bot available for use. Great, it's authorized. Now, I'm going to do this on Replit. I'm going to be a little bit careful here because I've noticed a lot of tutorials where basically they give away all of the secrets and leave you in a lot of trouble. I'm afraid a few YouTubers have been rather distressed, caused a lot of problems because they've given away their Discord IDs and they've destroyed their servers. Now, I'm going to try and be a little bit more secure. I'm not guaranteeing everything is secure here, but here we go. I'm going to put my key in. And so here comes my key. Are you ready for this? That's right. It's going to be my secret. So my Discord token. Now the thing about using the secrets function is that if I replicate, copy this, it's not going to show. Are you ready for the value? Oh yeah, sure. I'll give away my key. <laughs> of course, I didn't give away my key. XXXX for everything. Top secret. So then I import my OS and I import my secret, which I've put in there to make it easier so that we've got that. You then, if you're going to create, copy this code, you need to create your own secret piece there. Okay, and so now we're going to start typing our code and putting some code in. And I think this is going to be a fun little chatbot. So I'd like you to have a look at this, have a play with it, and feel free to take it for you yourself. So here we go. Okay, so there's a few imports I need. Firstly, I need to import Discord. I need to import random and import OS. Because this is on Replit, uh, Discord seems to be pretty much built in. There's no special imports going on here. And then what we're going to do is use our greeting lists and jokes. So all of these are things that we can use. There are a couple of lists and they just show you how to make a real simple chatbot. Okay, here we go. Of course, I'm doing dad jokes. Wouldn't you expect me to do dad jokes? Of course you do. 
I know. These are fantastic jokes. Like, why did the scientists wear denim? Because he was a genius. Just like me. Honest, Gov. Right. Now uh, we're looking at um, a response message. So putting a string in here. And what's going to happen here is we have the message that the person's sending to us. And we're going through it. So everything in here is whatever's in that message we're going to respond to. So we're going to return. So if I is in person. So we've got a little loop to go through the greeting list. And then um, if they put joke in there, then uh, we're going to string a random choice of joke. Oh, beautiful. Everybody needs more dad jokes. In fact, I'm funnier than Siri. I got more jokes than Siri. I'm not even trying yet. And then, of course, if you put roll, it's going to ran give you a random dice command. And if you ask for help, well, to be honest, it's not going to be very helpful. <laughs> it's just going to tell you it's not the smartest joke part. But you can see the potential here for making chatbots and very powerful chatbots too. And so here we go. Just a little bit more returning this. I'm just moving it down a little bit for you. Um, yeah, got no clue what is going on here. If it basically doesn't have a clue, it's going to do that. I might need to indent that back a bit. Hang on a minute, I'll fix that in a sec. Okay. Give me one second while I fix that up. Just make that nice. So I sorted out the if functions there. And this is the asynchronous bit. And that means it's going to go round and round and, and check it. And a lot of this code, to be honest, is boilerplate code that you've just really got to check so we've got to try and accept um, see if this works or not and here we go the response is there and we keep on awaiting uh, to see if the person is going to send anything and so if we accept then it's, it's just going to give us a simple error to let us know what's going on now the token, this is the important point. Um, it's in the secret area. Um, if this is forked, then that disappears and you have to follow this tutorial basically. Um, the intense.message content equals true. Your client, all of this is kind of things you absolutely have to use. Now I'm not going to be a bad sport. I'm going to let you fork this in a minute, so don't worry too much. So it's going to pull out the async and it starts by telling us it's running and then it keeps on going round. Now we have an event that follows this on. So we've got the username the user message and these really are all about setting things up nicely that's just a print just to, to help us track things as we go along And so it keeps on going round as we go. And there we have our complete code. We're just going to run it now. Now it doesn't look very exciting on the replit. And at the moment this is not an always on replit or anything clever. So it does need to be running. It's going to display some things like that. And if you're running your own replit client and another number you can do there. I'm going to nip over to my Discord client over here. And uh, let's just have a look. And so there we are. And I'm just going to ask something. And it says hi. 
and I ask it for a joke and it tells me a joke. And so that is how to make a simple Discord and how to keep it reasonably safe.